What's up guys, it's your boy Ruin. We are back for another Tales of Arise video and we've got an update here. Some of the stuff is information we've already covered on the channel. If you missed out on the video that went over each of the characters, some screenshots and their background information for Alfin, Blossom, Brinwell, and Law. I'll leave the link in the upper right hand corner. Definitely go check that out. It's got their background information, like I said, as well as their Mystic Arts animations. So definitely go check that out. But in this one, we're mainly going to go over the relevant information that's new here. So let's get right into this, y'all. First, they show some gameplay screenshots. We've already taken a look at each of these in the other video. However, a couple of tidbits. These two right here are showing ground attacks. These two are aerial attacks. And for each of them, you're going to have three different types. So you're going to have three different types of ground attacks. You're going to have three different types of aerial attacks. And supposedly, there's going to be simultaneous button commands. Right? So for example, on the PS5, it would be like an X square, right? Like a combo. That'll give you additional three types of attacks. So for 12 different techniques in total, they didn't really go too much in detail in this article here. However, we do have this additional screenshot to look at. So this right here, obviously, I can't, I can't like, I can't read this clearly because it's in Japanese. However, they're showing three different slots right here. So I'm thinking, for example, let's just say this says aerial, right? Just for example's sake. Let's say this is aerial. This will be our three different types of attacks we can use under aerial. Then there will be a different one for ground. And then you'll have a combo, basically, for a total of 12 different attacks. So this is, that was pretty much all we got for gameplay in this one. They did mention, however, that there's going to be an update for where they go more into the gameplay stuff, into more details, as well as talk about the new boost attack feature that's going to be available in Tales of Arise. Main thing I want to talk about with her before we continue on, that I want you guys to keep in the back of your minds here, is that she is being labeled as a traitor, okay, by Balsif. Now, for the main part of this update, the new information that was revealed in this article right here is talking about the world, the universe in which Tales of Arise is going to be taking places. So now, just to paint the picture real quick before we get into the screenshot here. In the universe of Tales of Arise, there's going to be two planets, two races of people. On one side, you've got Dana. Dana, Danans, okay? On the other side, you've got Rena, Renans. So we got one planet, Dana. We got another planet, Rena. So that's basically the situation that this universe is in right now, in the realm of Tales of Arise. With that being said, the screenshot we've got here is actually representing Dana. Originally, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, before this game takes place, right? Dana was a nice, beautiful place, you know what I'm saying? Nice, beautiful, lavish, full of energy and life. Bunch of plant life, animal life, lakes, nice sunsets, beautiful, gorgeous. But. Then they got invaded. The Fire Nation attacked and everything burned to the ground. Renans invaded Dana, took over the land, took over the people, subjugated them and turned them into Dores, right? Exerted their supremacy and basically just burned their entire land to the ground. Culture, land, plant life, everything. Keeping this screenshot in mind of Dana, let's go ahead and take a look at Rena. Right over here. Will y'all look at this? Look at that! What a difference! Again, Dana, post Fire Nation invasion, and Rena. Look at this difference, y'all. Look how look at all this glitz and glamour. Look at this beautiful glitter and just bright sparkles all over the place. I'm thinking that this planet right here is Dana. So this is Rena. Beautiful, lavish greenery, nice and pretty, and they basically coin it as the land of the gods. So I find that interesting that they coined Rena as the land of the gods, the home of the gods, and they're the ones that are ex uh, exacting their supremacy over Danans and turning them into Dores. So I find that little whole interaction kind of interesting, and I'm thinking that the ruler of Rena has let that, let that power get to his head. You know what I'm saying? He thinks he's all high and mighty, he thinks he's sweet, you know what I'm saying? He thinks he's a custard-filled pastry. And he's trying to exert his supremacy and control people. The way that Renans invaded Dana and took control of all life there is by using advanced technology and demons. So let's go ahead and take a look at this screenshot. Right over here. You already saw this in the previous one, but I didn't really go into it that much because there wasn't any background information. But now we have some. So first of all, we've got... This is actually a foot soldier. So this right here is a mere foot soldier. I mean, look at his armor. Like, look at the quality of his armor, the detail of this helmet. Big... Bad shoulders right here. The blade looking nice and thick. And then we've got this ferocious demonic beast over here. With canine teeth you do not want to get beaten by. You absolutely do. Look at the size of this. Right after Renans invaded Dana and took over the land and the people. They essentially divided the area into different 
provinces. So little like you could think of it as different provinces, right? Different cities, and they're separated by quote unquote walls. So what is up with all of these JRPGs, animes, and real life, and the obsession with walls? Like, is everybody trying to be a Shingeki no Kyojin? Like, what is going on here? The area that we're seeing right here is the land of fire, Caliglia. So their actual energy is based off fire. They're, what they're working right here is the Dores are being forced into accumulating the fire actual energy. So that's what they're doing hard at work. And they've actually got cores embedded into their arms. Right? Similar thing we've seen across the board in games and in real life. Kind of distinguishing people based off like visuals. But uh, like armband visuals. But in this case, they embedded cores into their arm. So that's interesting. Oh, quickly also before I go to my point from what I was mentioning earlier that I gave a little uh, hint towards. This is where he also picks up the Blazing Sword. Which makes sense, Land of Fire, Caliglia, Blazing Sword, you know. Each province, each area that's segregated by these quote-unquote walls has a ruling lord. So that ruling lord only has power over the specific area he's, has to, like he's, you know, controlling. So for example, the lord of Caliglia doesn't have power over the other land. He only has power over this specific region. Which means two things. Who the heck is the lord of lords? Or the aka the end game big bad boss battle. Who is that? Because ultimately, in order to fully free Danans, you need to take care of him. Like, okay, it's, it's, it's well and good to take care of the lords of the provinces, but unless you take out the head honcho, the main man, the one that's calling the shots, it's mood. It's a mood point. So who is that? Now, next. This is my main theory. So this is a theory, right? No evidence towards this. This is my personal opinion. Memes aside, simping aside. Blossom over here. Shihon. I actually think she could potentially be a princess. Now, what I mean by this, Balsif is the is the lord of Caliglia, right? He's the ruling lord of that province. He has labeled her Blossom as a traitor, as Urugiri Mono. Now, you gotta also keep in mind she's a Renan, and she is actually helping the resistance forces in Dana, helping the Danans in order to repel back the Renans. So what I'm thinking is that she could potentially be the true heir to the throne in Rena. Her family is the ones that are supposed to have the power in Rena. However, whoever is currently in the position of rule, of authority, through some undermining tactics, some nonsense, some BS, you know what I'm saying? Basically probably killed her parents or something and he's, he's the one that's now in power and he's exacting his sort of principles, his ruling, right? He's the one who authorized the invasion. And then he banished her, I'm thinking. So she got banished as a traitor because she she's from that previous royalty family. And her sort of views would directly oppose the person that's currently in position that wants to exert supremacy and wants to turn Dana into his plaything. So I definitely think, right, again, memes aside, tipping aside that her role as a Renan, being a traitor, helping Danans is crucial to the overarching story of this game. Absolutely. Can land of Dana, the little segregated city that was mentioned in this update is this right here, Sis Lodia. Now a couple of things. First of all, it's a land of frozen. Another reference, right? It's a frozen land because it lost its light. Whatever that's supposed to mean. I'm assuming losing its light is uh, related to the astral energy being stripped away. Right? For example, in Caliglia, astral energy being stripped away. So I think that's a similar situation here. And right here, we're seeing these bunch of like lights right here. So I'm thinking this is potentially maybe a prison. Some sort of captive building that has that's holding uh, either Danon's prisoner or holding Danon's as servants and that this is essentially uh either stealing the light of the land or it's for them for, for a way for essentially to detect invaders or the resistance forces if you go over here what do we have here we've got uh, some masked men with the loaded gun a belt looking you know kind of equipped up here and we got an innocent little uh, bystander over here so essentially, these two are part of the Snake Eyes police force, right? The Renan Snake Eyes police force. So Cislodia, this area over here, Cislodia, is the place where we meet Law. So when we get to this region for the first time, we're going to meet Law and he's helping the Renan forces. So is he actually a traitor or is he being forced? Because maybe he got kidnapped as a kid or something. I don't know. I highly doubt they'll give Mystic Arts and battle gameplay screenshots for a character that's actually willingly consciously by their own decision betraying Danans and he's a Danon that doesn't make sense to me this is a resistance force they're going around helping the resistance forces because their goal is to take down the lords of each region and breaking down these quote-unquote walls in order to liberate and free the Danans that's what's going on right here and the resistance forces they actually have localized groups for each province so what that means 
Caliglia has its own resistance force called the Crimson Crow, right? Which is being led by Zephyr. Then Cislodia is going to have their own resistance force, whatever group that's going to be. Let's just say Ice Crows. I don't know. It's own resistance force. And then I'm assuming there's going to be other areas of land too, like other, other cities slash provinces, because I highly doubt this entire planet is going to be split into just two. That wouldn't make sense because that sounds fairly hard to reign over. So uh, if there's other regions, then that would mean there's other resistance forces as well for each sort of city. Now, last little tidbit. Right over here, we've got Zephyr, the leader of the Crimson Crow, the resistance force of Caliglia specifically. And as we can see here, we got this guy crossed over. We got him kind of leaning to the side. These two looking questionable and this guy just straight up dogging him. So basically right now, the situation, Danans are 50-50. They're wishy-washy with supporting the resistance force and re resisting the Renans. Which makes sense, right? Because you got to think about it two ways. First of all, yes, we're in support because we want freedom, right? We don't want to be Dorys for our entire lives. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to be mere servants. We want our freedom back. We want to restore our planet and our life back to what it used to be before. We want to restore balance. You know what I mean? But the other side is you resisting is just going to make piss them off, right? Us resisting. Us Danans resisting the Renans and the Lords of each region is going to piss them off and make the situation worse. Because now they're really going to exert their supremacy and really attack us, segregate us, subjugate us into who knows what kind of punishments. Right? Torture. Who knows what could happen. So I can definitely see that how it's uh, wishy-washy support of the resistance forces because of those two dif different facts. So... It'd be very in I'm very interested in seeing when, I when we play the game and the story to see how the resistance forces interact with sort of the civilians. Anyways, those are my thoughts on everything that we have on here. Let me know what you guys think. What are you guys excited for? What are y'all opinions on just the overall world and the universe that this game is taking place in? As well as my little uh, theory about Blossom over here. Anyways, y'all, that's it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Have a great, great day and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.